So in the last video, we derived an expression for the transfer function of an oscillator, or the phase noise, if you will. Uh, and we saw that it was equal to 1 over delta omega, or the magnitude of the transfer function, is equal to 1 over delta omega times the square root of the derivative of the magnitude of A evaluated at the resonant frequency squared plus the derivative of the phase of res with respect to omega squared, evaluated at omega naught. Uh, and this is a, kind of an ugly expression, and I don't blame you if you're a little scared of it, but we're going to go over an example uh, that need not be need not be so scary. So in a previous video, we analyzed the three-stage ring oscillator. And if you haven't watched that video, then I suggest you do that now, uh, because you'll be less confused as we go through this. So this is our three-stage ring oscillator. We're assuming that each oscillator is connected to the output stage of the next oscillator. These are just NMOS transistors. And then our output is connected back to the input. And so this conforms to the simple linear model that we used to derive phase noise, which is just that we've got some forward transfer function A, which is a function of frequency, and we've got some feedback, which is unity. And we're also going to assume that there's a certain capacitance that we're driving at each of these nodes, nodes C, and that this capacitance is dominant over all the other capacitances in the node, so the, or all the other capacitances in the circuit. So the RT, RC time constant is going to be dominant for that capacitance. And so the forward path gain of this overall circuit, if we just break the feedback path, uh, A of omega, is just A naught cubed, which is just the DC gain, divided by 1 plus J omega over omega RC. And that's cubed, because there's three stages in succession with each other. And omega RC is just 1 over RC. It's just 1 over our RC time constant. So if we want to calculate the magnitude of this function, magnitude of A, We know that that's just equal to a naught cubed because a naught is a, is a scalar, not a complex scalar, um, divided by the square root of one plus um, omega over omega RC squared, and that should I mean it's one squared because it's the real part squared, but um, you get the point. And then that's cubed, so this whole thing is to the three halves. And we know that the phase of omega, phi of omega, is equal to 3 times the inverse tangent of omega over omega naught. Well, great. Uh, that is all we need to know. So, so all that remains now is to calculate the derivative of each of these functions. So the derivative of the magnitude evaluated at omega naught with respect to omega is just, and I calculated this using a calculator because I'm about to calculate it by hand, uh, a naught cubed times omega times omega RC cubed divided by omega squared plus omega RC squared to the five halves. And it's a little ugly, uh, but you can make the substitutions because we know omega is equal to omega naught because we're evaluating it at omega naught. And we know that omega RC is equal to omega naught divided by the square root of 3. And we know that from the video on our analysis of the ring oscillator because we got that the resonant frequency is just equal to the square root of 3 divided by RC. And so if you plug those in, and you also plug in the condition that A naught must equal 2, and that was the condition for sustained oscillation also in our video on uh, the ring oscillator, then we'll get that the mag this derivative is equal to 9 fourths times 1 over omega naught. That's, that's the answer to the derivative of the magnitude function. If we differentiate the phase function, we'll get that it's equal to omega RC divided by omega squared plus omega RC squared. 
And if we make the same substitutions that we made above, we'll get that d phi of omega d omega is equal to 3 root 3 over 4 omega naught. And so we've got both of these. And so we can calculate what our skirt looks like or what the overall transfer function of the oscillator looks like. Well, it's 1 over delta omega, or the magnitude rather, 1 over delta omega times the amplitude derivative squared, which is just 81 over 16, 1 over omega naught squared, plus the phase derivative squared, which is 9 times 3, or 27 over 16, 1 over omega naught squared. Well, we can factor some stuff out, uh, and we'll get 1 over delta omega over omega naught times the square, or 1 fourth times the square root of 81 plus 27, which if you simplify it is just, which is just equal to one over delta omega over omega naught times three root three over two. Or we could rewrite it flipping some stuff up to the top and get omega naught over delta omega times this constant factor two over three root three. And that's our answer. So this describes the shape of the skirt of our oscillator outside of the uh, resonant frequency omega naught. So at some distance delta omega, the relative height is given by this. And uh, that's, that's it. So it's a, a fairly lengthy but at least straightforward calculation. All you need to do is find the magnitude and phase derivatives of the overall forward path gain, and then use that to calculate the magnitude of the transfer function of the oscillator.